Hello everybody, my name is Farmer Phil and today we are with Farmer Livy. You're a full time farmer now Liv. My name. And a shopkeeper. What do you want to be, Farmer Olivia? No, just Liv. Liv, okay. And there are the suckies. Looking good as always. Aren't you boss? Aren't you? So, today's video is a day in the life of what we get up to. So, what's to be done? It's actually a bit windy. Um, we have to go feed all of them lovely boys. Get them some meal, go through them, make sure everyone has got their milk through the other shed. <coughs> then, um, I'm going off ring rolling. Uncle is going off plowing, track them plow is there. Father Phil is going off spraying. And what are you doing, Liv? So anyways, that's what we've got to do today. It's great to see them out, isn't it? Hi well, Suckies, how's everybody today? Oh, they look okay, there's a fair few of them outside. And there's all these lovely boys and girls to look after. Ugh. So anyways, Liv is just filling the water there. How much are you giving out today? 110 litres. 110 litres, that's the full of that. So like if we got another pen of calves, we'd be a bit screwed for getting hot water. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, Liv is going to look after the calves in the bucket. I'm going to run through the other shed behind the meal. So we'll stick the two cameras and time lapse and we get the calves fed down here, then we'll go do the other shed. So I'm just going through the shed and I have usuals, I think I don't know what's there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 I had 16 so I have 5 of them in and yeah, they're a little bit of a pain, this shed always seems to have more pets than the other shed, the other shed is fine the other shed we might put one calf, that'd be the height of it the shed just not going as well but at the same time it's just the same calves, it's just become pets. That's all right, the jersey that had the jacket on you, some of you may remember, that's him there. 551. He's, he's starting just to fill out nicely, he's coming into his own there now. He was shook enough for a while, but he's starting to come into his own there. So, just have that shed done, meal, milk and all fed and all is relatively okay. There's one jersey boy there with quite a bit of a blow on him. Don't think he's gonna make it to this evening. But however, that's livestock, or there's livestock, there'll be dead stock, but sure, all you can do is try your best. So anyways, we'll go to the next shed now. So there's some of the hens we hatched. Not looking too bad. So, here's the other shed now. So I'll just quickly go through the numbers on the feeder, make sure everyone is okay. M nearly all, all the calves are off milk. We're, the first of the calves are fully off milk next week. So I'll be hoping to get them starting mm -hmm. to get them batched and away, which is going to be great. We'll take pressure off this shed and we'll probably, if I can get away with it, bring a batch of calves from the other shed and put them in the training pen here and get them on the feeder because a bit less work for us all to do. And I think better calves always come off the mag feeder. Anyways. So, just meal in, you can see there's a bit of a panic on to get meal. There's near, not enough trot spaces really. We'll put some meal outside. One more calf to put in and we're finished then. Happy days, just such a nicer shed to do anything with. So, just out from the coffee. 
and um, just bringing out some silage to the bulls at home. These are the bulls that had grazed out there. They've all this side of the river grazed, and the next move is the other side of the river. But we don't know whether we have enough grass the other side of the river to keep them going. And the last thing we want to do is end up eating that quickly and then having nowhere to go with them. It's the wrong side of the river and having to bring them back. So we're going to feed them some of this. Now it's not the tastiest stuff, it's the stuff off the top of the pit. Let them they'll root through it, see what they want out of it. And when we move them off here, we'll come out here at the tractor and loader and we'll rake it out of it, scatter it out a bit. But it's just keep these lads going till maybe another week. We think another week and we should have enough grass built up on the other side of the river to keep them going and we'll be able to start paddocking our way back down and should be able to keep the thing going but yeah it's just a bit annoying it's been a late spring or a very poor growthy spring and you can see it now on a lot of farms and we reckon silage, silage season isn't going to be too early this year it could end up going on into towards the end of May before it really gets going rather than the middle of May but anyways I go get the, just washing the 64A, he giving her a quick rinse and put her on the ring roller and away I go. to Newtown Cash, the people we uh, made the video on so on that we broadcast right, we're going to ring roll that, that's what I'm doing, and big block of stones, that's why I'm in the 6480. I've given her a little bit of a wash, and uh, clean up, not exactly a whole lot, it's still quite dirty, but it's a little bit better than what it was. That's the main thing, and it's, little bits can just make a little bit of a difference, but um, yeah, it's still not where it needs to be, but anyways. Good bay on down the road. We are ring rolling away as you can see there through the cloud of dust behind me. So, have handy days now, pick a lot of stones as we go. We get a bit of time lapse, throwing us there, we get a bit of footage, we do all the usual old crack. I got two stone here to pick up. So, turn down my loader. See, I can just see it there. Turn it up. Don't pay. I'm jumping down for you guys there. So I'm rolling at ring. Uh, I'm traveling at about 11 kilometers an hour. Doing a nice, tasty job. We'll have a look when, when I get out later. But the reason for ring rolling, there's I suppose two reasons. Two reasons. One of the reasons why you roll ground after sowing is to compact the soil, compact the soil around the seeds so that you get a more even germination. If you don't roll, you kind of get a, an uneven germination and it, 
roll and it gives you an even germination. The reason you ring roll it over just a normal flat roller is because a flat roller, if there's heavy rain, can leave a pan on the soil and can give off of trouble. Whereas your Cambridge roller, or ring roller as we call it, has the grooves in it, so it doesn't, so if it does rain heavy, it's not, it's not going to create a pan and cause trouble. And another reason then we ring roll is to just bury any stones so we can get nice and close to the stubble to get all the straw, get all the crop, especially if the crop was to lodge again out here, that it just eliminates that there shouldn't be any stones sitting above the ground. Also with this tractor then with the, the stone fork on the loader, we can pick up any big stones that I wouldn't be able to bury with the ring roller. And that is why we do it. So anyway, it is 12 o'clock. I have an hour to try and get 19 acres done, which could be a bit of a stretch to go home, to go back here on, on the next bit of ground that's first sown. Anyways, just tip along there nicely now. So, just out in the second field, first field done. And I'll just show you the difference now. We have an overlap around the corner, but just confirms the ground down a little bit. But one of the things, just to, to show you how this crop is germinating. So here is one here. Can you see? Hopefully it's not hiking up. Just starting to sprout. It's just starting, it's, um, it's five days I think since we sowed it. It's just starting to sprout, just nice for rolling. If it was to go any further, you wouldn't roll it because you damaged the crop. It's one of the things with ring rolling, you don't ring roll. If the crop is just starting to come up out of the ground, you don't roll it until it's established and you can roll it again after that. And that's really it, that's the only times you can roll. When I'm up through the night, I can't turn down the noise, tear all the worries out of my mind about who I'm supposed to be. I start to believe I can't get it right. Remember the days I let slip away, they were simple at times. Mama told me before you leave, if there's only one thing you remember from me. Child, when you're out on your own I'm still on my way, lost in these streets of where I belong. I'm still rolling the dice, praying sometimes. It don't last me long. I'm losing my faith, I'm walking away from what you knew all along. Mama told me before you leave, if there's only one thing you remember from me. Child, when you're out on your own A million miles from home Feeling the weight of the world on your shoulders Child, don't forget who you are Don't lose your head or your heart I bet my life on your stars You'll be dancing, dancing on the
of the fun things about this tractor. Radio doesn't work. Aircon doesn't work. Blowers don't even work. It just throws hot air. Not my favorite tractor in the fleet. It needs a fair bit of work to leave her comfortable. Maybe. Last field. And we should be done in about 20 minutes, I'd say. I don't remember a tire being there. It should be there. Uh, Freaking yoke is after falling off. Not the first time it ever happened to me. It happened to me before years ago. But that's a sign that the Baron was knackered. And when I mean knackered, I mean knackered for it to fall off. I suppose in one sense, it's kind of lucky it fell off there, better fall there than come off on the road. But um, yeah, it's fun. Super wheel. Huh. There is a bearing. And there is a seal. Hmm. Why did that come off? Let's just walk back up to see. Because that bearing is intact. So there's no reason why that should have come off. You don't see anything up the line. Okay. Fun. Fucking fun. Didn't get finished for the dinner, so maybe has come to pick me up and escort me home. How is your day going so far? Got lots done? Yeah. Fences up? Uh, two fences up. Two fences up. Casting hard? We're going to leave that there because I don't have the way of fixing it. Uh, I don't know whether it's a new bearing or it's missing the nut anyways. Maybe it's just the, the lock on the nut broke and then everything just vibrated off. I don't know. But anyways, we're leaving it there. We'll pick it up when we need it and fix it. Just don't have the means of fixing it. I think he wants to put all new bearings in it after that happening. But we don't have the bearings. It's, that's the problem. But anyways neither here nor there so i was supposed to be going home to move a, a roller and leave eric with this tractor to go get some more rolling done when he gets home from school but they've changed the plans they're putting another tractor on the roller moving it for him and i'm to bring this to where i was harrowing yesterday because uncle ian is going to pick a lock of stones i thought he was going to go plowing but he's caught up with everywhere we've dung out so far so we need to get more dung out so he can get more plowing done so yeah Nothing like a bit of pressure. But anyways, we're going to where I was harrowing yesterday, uh, min tilling and hiring a bit of plowed ground that we plowed out a bit of winter crops. I'll, I'll show you when we get there. It's a little bit of a mess. Just wait for us up a diesel and we'll be ready to get some harrowing done and it's actually dried quite it has looked to dry quite well since yesterday we'll show you the ground in that it's it's turned up very cloddy and it's going to take another two runs so it'll be three runs all together to get it fit first ground is still wet enough around us still wet enough it just takes that cut rear cut rear to get it get it right now but anyways wait for some diesel So, we are now harrowing away, but as you can probably tell, we're not mini tilling, we're harrowing plowed ground, but we're not even plowing. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, look at this bit of ground here, what you can see quite a bit, there's about six acres between this and another field, was all in winter wheat. Uh, actually, that's in winter barley, this is winter wheat, I think. 
and um, it didn't grow. Just to show you, this patch here is probably going to be hunkering and missed when he was plowing, but this patch here, which is basically nothing, bit of a green hue off of meadow grass and a, a couple of sprigs of, of wheat seed, that was all that ploughed ground. And there's a stripe comes up the middle and the far side of the road. Nothing grew, literally, quite literally, nothing grew. And you turn up that there, that's what it's like. And it's real old, like it's awful hard old ground. I just very, very disappointed with that. Uh, some of you may remember the video as uh, one of the videos I made with the 3690, it seems at the end, the live video of sowing winter crops. That's what we're doing this field. Nothing grew down here. Absolutely disaster, disappointed. Why? We think the, the wet, you can see here. Look, look, look at that. It's just pure solid. The clay. We think it was the wet. We're pretty sure it was the wet because there's along the edge of the field, there's a six foot drain. Real deep drain water, some water in it. But there was puddles of water three foot back from the drain. The water is just not getting out of this end of the field. It's not going anywhere. And it pretty much just waterlogged the field and it just never grew. Absolute disaster. So I had to plow on green reckons about six acres. And we're re we're going to put in spring barley for hopefully combining. Obviously won't be with uh, winter crop, but it's going to make it quite difficult to to manage, you know, to spray in. In some regard, it's, it's going to be a bit awkward, but what can we do? There is quite literally, hands are tied up. The only alternative was to just let it go idle. But it doesn't look great having six acres. Not honest, like nothing. A lot of meadow grass and a couple of sprouts here and there, but there was nothing here. And we just decided we we're going to plow what was there out of it and pull it back in, put it into spring, the spring crop. And I don't think we'll chance a winter crop out here. There's something, some just we, we can't understand why the water is holding here on the ground when there is such a deep drain right beside it. Literally three foot in from the drain, you start to get puddles of water. It doesn't make much sense. We are going to be working with Nova Q. They supplied us with the slurry bug or the slurry additive for breaking it down with the bacteria and that. And we're working with them on one of the fields up here. We're going to go there down their road of minimum minimal amounts of fertilizer sprays the whole lot and try and work on increasing the soil and the bacteria and all of that kind of stuff. What can you do? Plow it over, harrow it, and go again, and hopefully it's not, it doesn't go the same way. Anyways. So, finally, out of the plow ground, they're just putting on the water bottles there to bring it home on the 6480. But, um, just finish that plow ground. Uh, Father Phil wants me to do a second run on the bit I've already done yesterday. Uh, just to see what it comes up like and yeah just see what it turns turns like now this time what do you think oh look at it now so it looks here it looks well but it actually looks like in the gallery it's turned up a, a nice little bit now it's not as bad it's as it was now. oh look at this go up yeah go up ah yeah you're getting there just needs to dry, that's all. Yeah, it's fierce cloudy, so there's like, you yeah, can you, could, yeah, you, you can see what it was like there. Yeah, no, but uh, yeah, that now would allow you to sow it when another day is dry. Yeah, and then the next uh, hit, 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 we'll, we'll leave it nice now. Yeah, yeah, right, that's okay, that's all I wanted to see. You yeah. keep going, leave it all like that. Um, someone will connect you here at dark. Yeah. That stuff is going to balance in the morning. Yeah, to get that ready to sow. That's all that's the morning. Yeah. Come back here and so on kind of this Saturday. Yeah. That's fine, I'll keep to it. You, like, yeah, you want to be out here in the morning though. Yeah. You're running two foot, so maybe get back here and get some of that cut. Yeah. yeah. So, we're out here in this field. I just want to show you. You can see the depth the disc is going into the ground. So it is going in quite, actually going in a lot of people down. I thought we were. 
by you see how it's coming up behind me it's coming up in these clods now a lot of that is because of the our meadow grass is growing and the roots is holding everything together that's why that is happening but what i want to show you you can see some of it here now see that the pan it's hard there's it's you've seen it quite well in that other the, the plow ground where they had that shine here because he thought the ground was very hard and dug it up and the top four or six inches of soil was just stuck together marl just glued together and underneath that then was loose and he was saying that that's two things it can be either compaction or it can be over fertilization causes calcium boron magnesium and other elements to bind together and it creates like compaction this hard pan that doesn't allow worms and stuff to get up doesn't allow nutrients out and holds water and we think that that could be the problem the soil analysis was taken off the fields to go to check to see is that what the problem is so that he can do his sprays and everything to suit the ground and if that's what this is it's highly likely that that's the problem in the other field that it's over fertilization has bound up all these things because we can't fathom why over there is so bad and why it did not grow or why it's so wet when there's a drain right beside it and this is going to be the same so hopefully now he'll be able to solve that and it was really really interesting if you want to me to do a video with him on it please let me know in the comments down below i found it very interesting uh, same lad that done the talk with this slurry additive and um yeah next time he's up he's also as the crop grows they're going to be taking sap analysis to see that there's no disease coming into the crop so to make sure that if there is any signs of disease that we can go with sprays then to try and avoid having to use um the fungicides and, and different it's just gonna be interesting to see how it goes what the yield is like and what the quality of the crop is like i am really looking forward to it but anyways i better get back in the tractor and get some power now that's just how it is button button down and away we go Just for those of you that might want to see how the rest of the wheat is looking where it's better this is it yeah, reasonably thick crop not looking too bad so it's not i see a little bit of frost damage but nothing <laughs> nothing majorly wrong nice nice green color in it that's what the field should look like or all of it except for that bit down there but anyways just for anyone that wanted to see how the winter wheat was looking even though the camera is probably shitting itself at the minute with all the green You can also see there now, this field is actually tilling up a heck of a lot nicer than the first, the last field I was in. That's actually tilling up very, very nice, so it is. Be interested to see how the rest of it tills up in comparison, but that's actually, that's, uh, that's tilling up very nice, so it is. Very, very nice.
what this time of the year is for me harrowing tillage 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 and then you get maybe a week of getting ready for silage maybe not even it all depends on how things work out but anyways we'll go home Hi Bertie. Fine. Fine. So Jesus bro. What? Calm down. No. So I forgot to bring my camera with me, but I rescued Liv from the calf shed at 10 o'clock. <laughs> it's half 10 now. You probably should have seen this video of bro hammering in stuff. I'm not racking going in. Huge that is a great job now. Back to back big shelving. Bye to bye bro, camera's dead. That camera's dead? Yup. <coughs> okay. Well now we're on this camera. <coughs> so I'll, so I know I'll finish this video. So anyways, that is it from us. Do a bit of this for this other video, but that, that's it. It's half ten now. No video to edit tonight, so I get a... a a night off for a change so anyways that is it for me live bro father phil as always please like and subscribe to the channel videos every tuesday thursday and sunday that is it from us good luck good luck good luck <laughs>